Hey there, Glockster here. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, Farthest Frontier uh, with you guys. Actually, I've been playing the game for about a couple dozen hours now, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start a new settlement. And I'm just going to go with pretty much the defaults, except go with the uh, larger map size. And I think we'll do this one on the Lowland Lakes, which is kind of the starter map. Uh, the other ones, the other one I've been playing a lot is the, the Alpine Valleys. I say playing a lot. I've played a couple, couple on there, a couple on the Lowland Lakes. I think for a starter one, though, we'll go with the Lowland Lakes for this. Keep all the all the defaults and get right into it. And get exactly the same kind of starting message. Ah, we have iron ore. We have iron ore. We have lots of iron ore. Lots of iron ore. I've had a map similar to this before. Lots of water. That's a good sign. Um, This is loaded with iron ore. I mean, just absolutely. This is like Iron Mountain. And some deer, eggs, more iron ore, imagine that. The boars. As I say, boars aren't necessarily, they, they stay in one area. So they don't range or roam like uh, wolves do. But if your villagers get too close to them, they will uh, wreck your day. There's a wolf right there. All right. Let's see. We have more. More hawthorn, hawthorn, hawthorn. Some medicinal roots, which are good. More deer. More deer. This is looking good. Looking real good. I would like to find some blueberries. There's some clay up here. And some coal. It's probably a real small coal deposit. Another wolf there. And some greens. And yeah, more hawthorn. Not, not the blueberries I'm after. Blueberries are awesome. Because you can move them. More deer. Oh, I bet that's super fertile land right there. Oh, you can. Uh, yeah, you can. So if you hit the F key, you can turn on uh, fertility mode and see just uh, where your fertile areas are. You know, there's lots of food options over here. There's lots of greens, fertile ground. Of course, the greens are in the fertile ground where we'd probably be putting, putting some uh, crops, some farms. Yeah, lots and lots of greens. I like that area. That area's good for some farms, some farming. Yeah, there's some decent fish there, in there. All right. There's ooh, there's some more super fertile ground right over here, right right up the middle. So, I do believe we will probably pretty much go in the middle. That way we're not too far from the just absolute ridiculous plethora of iron on that mountain. All right. Yeah. Let's get started. I think we'll just plop down right about here. Up here in these trees a little more. There we go. Yes. Confirm. Mm. All right, and here we go. Here we actually go. So I'm going to do a little more harvesting. Because they're going to need more wood than what they got there. And of course, when you get started, you your housing is uh, low and your firewood is low. Because you have neither of either. Neither of either. None of any. All right, and then food is pretty much the name of the game. 
You got some good rocks around here too. So turn off the fertility overlay. And then I believe we will get started in just a moment with some few roads. Throw down some foragers and hunters and houses. I'm going to get this storage cart a little bit out of the way. You can move them around by <laughs> move the building. Not really a building. All right. I didn't want to move him too far because right now he's my only storage. Until I build the stockyards and other storage buildings. And until this gets built, you really can't build anything else. If you're trying to build, like, houses, no, can't do it. Storage, nada. And uh, your food production, oh, we can go ahead and get started with that. The other thing you can do is you can build some roads, but we don't really need them exactly yet. Uh, let's see. We will... Hey, looky there. Town center done. Where were those deer? Those yummy, delicious deer. I don't know that they're on here yet. I believe they were over here, though. I think they're up this way. I'm going to do a little exploration off that direction here in a moment. But first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and build a forager shack. I'm going to go ahead and just throw it down out over here for now. One of the good things is, is any kind of buildings um, you can move, except for your town center, of course. I got to show you how you can move things, and town center can't be. The N key will bring up your ability to build roads, and that is what we want to do. I'm going to throw down a little start the grid. And then I believe we will start throwing down some houses. They would like to sleep somewhere other than cold, hot ground. The tab key can uh, change your orientation of buildings. So that'll throw down four buildings. And then we're going to want to start working on the firewood splitter. Firewood's important not only for heating, but a lot of your industries will also use uh, firewood. So firewood is a constant source of need. All right. Once you have your forager shack put down, uh, you can see I got somebody out there already, and they are starting to collect some goodies. However, you can move where they're collecting goodies from. This little uh, retarget building work radius. You don't really change the radius, but you do change where they're gathering from. So I'm going to go right there. And look at that. There's a blueberry. Uh-oh. I got a wolf attack. Run away! Run away! So what you can do is I'm, I'm highlighting all my villagers and right-clicking on the wolf, and that way they're all going to come running to, to attack the wolf that's attacking my villager. Because... Ah! Uh, one of my villagers died! 
That sucks. But that's the way it goes, unfortunately. Okay. So we have this building has no firewood. We do have our first house built and our first dead villager, which means two things. One, we need firewood. Two, we need some place to bury the dead villager. And I think we'll... Uh, We'll see, where is a, a good, uh, fairly unusable, unimportant spot for a cemetery? All right. So the cemetery is under the amenities and services. This little headstone icon. And I think we'll throw it down eh, right about here. And they're needing water also, which there is water here. It's close enough for them to traverse back and forth to get it. Um, but they do absolutely need the firewood. Now then, the firewood, like so many of your industries, go down to resources and firewood splitter. You notice... People don't like to live next to the firewood splitter. It has a negative debuff to desirability. The reason being is that, well, you know, they're making noise, chopping wood all day, all night. The whole hours of the day and night. So I think what I'll do is I'll put him up here by the, uh... I'll put him up here by the cemetery... And then I'm going to intend to build all my housing pretty much from here southward toward the water. All right. Once you get a, a couple houses down, you get this little pop-up message. You need to have a four-month supply of food and six houses. Right now we have a seven-month supply of food, three of which will spoil sometime within the next uh, 12 months. So food spoilage is an issue. Food has always been the, the the most difficult thing I have had a problem with. And here we go with the bring out your dead message. Bring out your dead! That villager is not saying, I'm not quite dead yet. And there's another wolf. So, what I'm going to do, a dire wolf. Urgh. to go oh there he is let's go I'll go attack the wolf again I need to get a hunter up hunters will do better all right so I'm gonna take this guy I'm gonna like run him away because the wolf is chasing that person so I'm gonna run him back and forth between there we go aha and now we shall eat you. But before we can eat you, I need to throw down a hunter shack. Now, I've had two wolves over here from this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and even though I don't see a an area for the hunter to, uh, you know, like an area of deer or boar over here, I'm actually going to throw down a hunter shack out this way. Because I'm, I'm wondering if maybe there might be a wolf den over this direction. I'm a little annoyed that I've already lost... Already lost a settler. Poor Earl. He was a good guy. And then he got eaten. I don't know what his name was, but we'll go with Earl. Alright, I'm just going to drop him here. And let's see how you're doing. Where are you at? Where's my forager at? Where are you foraging? Why are you not foraging? Hey. Ah, there she is. So she was getting some willow. Okay, now one of the things uh, that's really awesome about blueberries is that they can be moved. So we can take this blueberry and this little relocation button up here means we can take and move it. And I'm going to move it right next to her little hut. 
And that way, she doesn't have to go very far at all to harvest that blueberry bush. And another. So I'm going to have a little blueberry patch up here. All right. Yes, our firewood is still non-existent. And it looks like we are needing to harvest some more trees, too. Oh, well, they're still working on the trees. I'm, I'm using them as fast as they're chopping them down. They chop them down, and I use them up. We got a clay deposit. That's a pretty decent clay deposit up there. We will end up using that. Clay is used for a lot of things, but early game, you can take your clay... Once you get to tier two, I believe it is. Once you get to tier two and you have your wagon shop built, you can actually basically mine the clay. It's called a clay pit. And then once you do that, you can then put down a... Where'd it go? No, it's in here. A potter building. And this will just use the clay, water, firewood... Uh, once again, you have to have a storehouse for that. But when you get this down, it'll start producing um, pottery. And pottery sells to, sometimes, to wandering merchants. And it's a, it's a decent source of income. Especially early game. Alright, so they finished delivering all the wood for the firewood splitter, and now they are building the firewood splitter building. Which means I can then assign somebody to said firewood splitter building. Which happens automatically. Once you put down a building, somebody's automatically assigned to it. And I can end up adding a second person once we get a little more population, a few more buildings that need firewood. Uh, but right at the start you're going to be okay with just having a single person chopping wood. You can look at all your people by clicking on the people a thing, the people a thing up there. And right now I only have four laborers. I have four builders. Builders will basically be laborers when they don't have anything to build, like right now. Um, and then I have a forager and a hunter and all the rest of this stuff and a firewood splitter and all the rest of this stuff's pretty much grayed out because I don't have anybody doing any of these professions yet. So, right now we have a hunter, and I'm going to assign him over in this direction in the hopes that he will explore this area and see if there is indeed anything over there that we need to be worried about. All right. And right now, I am going to go ahead and build yet another forager. Because the one I have is going to be a little busy. One of the things you may have noticed is now these all, all these hawthorns popped up. Well, they're, they're kind of seasonal growth kind of uh, plants. So these things grow late in the uh, summer and into the fall. And it says they're kind of, you, you only eat it if you really have to. You eat this out of desperation. But for the first uh, year or two, it'll get the job done when it comes to food. <laughs> and another villager died. Wow. This is not a good start. Not a good start at all. But we will soldier through somehow, some way. Even if I have to kill all these villagers, we will manage. Well, I guess if I kill them all, we won't manage. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. You know, the. My, my little forager went off grabbing all that willow 
and not the food. Get the food. But that's okay. I'll put down, as I say, another forager right up here and have them kind of hitting the other side a bit. So again, a forager's under your food production and a forager shack. We'll go ahead and drop them right there. <laughs> and now we're back up to 12. One villager born and one decided that he wants to come, you know, live here. So what we'll do with this other forager is once they're up and ready, probably start them up here and have them pick up these nuts and some hawthorn and then move them around to this other hawthorn and the greens just to make sure we got food enough here at the beginning the eggs aren't working yet or, or have already stopped producing And we have another clay over here. It'll do. Not great. All right. So here in another year or two, I'll probably uh, start working on this super fertile land over here and start making some crop plots. Mm, you're not... Ah! There we go. There's a lone deer out there. Actually says three, but at least that hunter will now be able to start bringing us some food. Whoops, wrong button. All right. Since I continue to seem to be having complaints of fresh water, and once you get your uh, far enough away from the water, you will need to start building some wells. Actually, I guess I won't bother yet. I seem to realize huh, we're living close to water. But once we expand the town up this way, especially since it looks like, well, since the plan is going to be that we're going to do our industry up in this direction, uh, we will need to plant or dig some wells up in this direction because a lot of those industries need water. For instance, that uh, we had already looked at the potter building. Uh, it does need water to make the pottery with needs both clay and water so what we'll do is we'll probably end up putting the pottery up over here near that clay and that way they don't have to go very far it's one of the things i'm still trying to kind of figure out how to do the layouts of of buildings and uh the storage and things of that nature speaking of storage i need to get that down the first storage thing that you put down is a stockyard. And the stockyard has no negative uh, impact on your housing. There's no desirability debuff. So I think I'm going to drop one right there. But your, your little covered wagon here can only hold so much it's got a pretty small capacity uh, your stockyards can hold a lot more and then they can be upgraded to hold even more but that's gonna be beyond the scope of this first episode for sure we will see just how uh, how we do how far we get on this initial work or initial episode I guess I'm gonna extend some roads down here and I'm gonna throw down a couple more houses down here I 
Because I know I'm gonna need more housing. But I'm gonna wait on that since I think I've got enough building going on at the moment. I would much rather get the stockyard up and going before excess housing. Now the other tier one storages require that stockyard to be built first. Um, and the next tier one storage that I'm really wanting to get is the root cellar. Uh, root cellar is kind of a, uh, well, it's a, it's a storage for food. And the way it kind of works is it uses the relatively moderated and constant temperature of underground to help uh, reduce spoilage. And spoilage is an issue. Uh, the root cellar can likewise be upgraded in the sense that you can fill it with barrels. Uh, barrels are a ways down the road, though, because barrels require metal, uh, iron, and a cooper to craft those barrels. But once the barrels come in, I think you can get up to about a 50% bonus to reduce spoilage in a root cellar. So that's definitely a good thing. And I will be... It's it's on the radar. Targeting that. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Alright. Now then, our other... I went ahead and paused it while I can look around. Alright. I think I'm gonna move there stuff up here to get the nuts oh nuts yeah we'll go right there so now they'll be able to get these greens as well as these nuts up here and the hawthorn once it's in season again I didn't realize how long the greens season lasted One of the other things you're going to want to do uh, down the road, a little bit down the road, not too far, but is herbs. Uh, herbs are, one, used for making soap, and soap is important. Soap helps to stave off some of the diseases in the game. Uh, the other thing is, is I believe it is for large manors or the tier three housing. Um that you have to have herbs is one of the requirements to upgrade housing. I guess if they're going to be living in a big house, they need to have flavored food. All right, come on. Finish up. We're coming up on our first winter, and we have a good deal of firewood, 63. We only have a dozen villagers, settlers, so we should be fine through the winter. And right now, our people are all happy. If you click on your happiness, you'll see what you get. And a lot of these, you gotta kind of gotta focus in on earlier rather than later. Um, shelter, food; those are your those are the ones that are kind of the food's really the one that is going to get you most of the time quickest. Uh, desirability will get you, but more desirability prevents you from upgrading rather than lowering your overall happiness. But later on in the game, um, your lack of clothing and shoes or entertainment luxuries and beer, those will end up being an issue later on in the game. Looks like we're about to get to our first winter. I haven't seen the geese flock by yet. I may have missed it. Oh, I guess this these blueberries are in the water, so they, they can't get to them. Ah, we got some decent fish down here. So what I'll probably do is build a fishing shack down in this direction too. And that way we can take advantage of our lake here and get some fishing going I don't know how they're going to be fishing there's there's no beer yet how do you do that without beer oh well 
that's the way it goes in this game. Ah, there's our hunter taking down a deer. Nice. Alright. So I think I'm going to do a little exploration. Hit the the exploration here. You can hit E to shortcut it. I just want to see. So I know there were good stuff over here. There's another lake over in this direction. And Iron Mountain is back up here. And then uh, I think there was deer. I know there was boar further off in that direction. But I think there were some deer down there too. Alright. This game is pretty. The snowfall. The turning of the seasons. Um, it is, it does look good. And you can click on your, your town hall and it'll tell you what you need, what the requirements are here for your upgrade. You need to have eight shelters built, which we have four already. And you need to have a market built. And you need to get your population up to 30. So the population will come. We'll have villagers immigrating. But the one thing that we do have to do is we have to provide the housing. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up building the market right here where this, where our covered wagon is. So I'll end up moving it out of the way. But the reason I want to build a market here is a market has a nice desirability buff. It's kind of a, a central focus. So what I'll do is I'll build the market here and I'll end up surrounding the market with towns and maximize that desirability buff that the market's going to give. It also means that all the villagers who are around it have a shorter distance to get to the market to get food or down the road, clothes, shoes, etc. So I think for now, throw down a little more road this way. And then we will drop down a few more houses toward that. Need eight. And that'll be the eight. Go ahead and pop in that road. All right, there we go. Just taking a little look around, see what's going on. Yeah, the animations in here are really cool. You can zoom in quite far and watch this guy splitting the wood. As I say, the game is pretty. It does look good. Hey, yeah, already got another one of those houses up. As you can see, your population is divided. It, uh, the first number is the number of people you have, and then the second number is the housing that you have for those people. So right now we have uh, capacity to hold 20 people, but we've only got 50. And once again, water. I think I will end up building a well. After all. So, water is a resource. So we will drop down a well. Now, your well, depending upon where you build it, has that water bonus. So, maybe we'll put it... That's a 71% water bonus. That looks pretty good. So the well, um, it once it's built, it still takes a while to fill up. So it'll have a little icon saying that it doesn't have water in it. But it'll fill up, and it'll fill up faster with that water bonus. 
Wells can be upgraded um, one time right now. I don't know if uh, future updates will have further upgrades for Wells or not. And all the snow melts away. All the children were sad. Because they don't get to play in the snow. Build forts and have snowball fights and all that good stuff. All right. Three more stone and a little digging and we'll have our well done. So yeah, the stockyard has about double the capacity, or has double the capacity, of the wagon. A wagon has 750, the stockyard has 1500. Uh, but the stockyard doesn't really hold, you know, just everything. It just really is holding uh, raw materials and a few other things like bricks, your wood planks, and your firewood. And we get another tutorial message about harvesting things. But of course, uh, it's telling us we're out of wood. Early game, you're, you're harvesting pretty much non-stop. And so that's what we'll do. We shall continue harvesting. Uh, I guess I need to cancel this because this will never go away. Unfortunately, I can't get this blueberry bush. All the rest of this is hawthorn. I'm always on the lookout for the blueberries, though, because... See, I probably can't get this one either because it's in the water. These rocks also, you can't... You can't end up harvesting them because they're basically in the water. And, you know, rocks and water, swimming, not not probably a great idea. In fact, speaking of rocks, though, oh, let's see what our, ah, here we go. Yeah, see, here's like Iron Mountain over here. That's Hawthorne, that's Hawthorne. There's our first kind of iron ore node that we'll be after. And I see no deer. More hot. Hmm. All right. Well, we shall just have to make do. And earlier we had like 10 months of food and now we have like two. So food is the struggle. The struggle is real. No food, no eat. No eat? That that would be bad. I like to eat. Alright, so I'm going to do a little more harvesting of both trees and stone over this way. Because I'm running a little low on the stone, too. Now, when we have no firewood, our, our firewood guy is not chopping anymore. But what he'll do is he'll go out and pick up some of the chopped down wood. And lo and behold, he starts chopping again. Let's see, where are you at? Where are you getting it? Now, this forager, everything in their radius is grayed out, which means there's nothing for them to forage here. There's a bird's nest way up there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them down over here where we got a couple bird's nests. And that way we can have them getting all those eggs. Pick up the eggs. Ah, and we can get some greens over this way too. There we go. And click on the uh, forager building and you can see where their radius of foraging is. Now I'm going to actually move this guy because he's going to come down here and, and harvest these willows, which is not bad, but I'm much more concerned about wanting him to focus on food right now. So I'm going to have him doing all these greens. And there we go. And then he can get some of those herbs too. 
keep on going. All right. So our wood supply's going up. Our firewood's going up. We're getting more stone. We got the four or eight shelters now built. So we have met the one requirement. And yet again, water. So we have the shelter requirement built and we still need to get the market and our population. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy yet again a little further. In fact, I think I'm going to move him over here now. Ah, incoming travelers wish to immigrate. That's going to be seven. That will go a long way. So now, just like that, we're up to 22 population. And the nice thing is, is that gives us a lot more laborers. So we can knock out things quicker. So let's see. We're going to build... We need to build our market, which means we need a saw pit and a storehouse. So we've already built the stockyard, which was the prerequisite for the storehouse. So now we're going to build a storehouse. And we shall put it... We shall put it right about... Right about out here. Yeah, I'm going to put it right next to that. And then we're also going to need to build out of the resources our saw pit. Once again, you see the negative desirability. Uh, same thing. It's noisy. Lots of sawdust. So they don't want to be next to it. They don't want to live next to it. I'm going to actually going to extend this road up this way a bit. And then I shall put down... I'm going to throw down another road to in front of the graveyard and such. There we go. All right, that's what I wanted. Having things on the grid is kind of nice when you have a large flat area. It just makes things easier to figure the layouts of. So we're going to go with the saw pit. Kind of weird to call it a saw pit. I think a sawmill. But whatever. All right. Right there. And we've already got all the materials for the storehouse built or put in. And now they're doing the construction. And they are going to be clearing the area for the road and for the saw pit. And once they get that done, they'll get to work on the building of that. And then we'll be able to put down the market right here. It'll go right here, it will. Bad British accent. I'm great at bad accents. It's about the only kind of accents I can do. Bad, bad, bad. bad. All right. I am going to go ahead and put down a fishing shack. Because it's like free food. So we'll 
drop the fishing shack right there. I love the fact that you can move things. It takes time, but the villagers normally have time on their hands, especially the laborers. All right. Let me see. I do believe we may be out of things to harvest. It does look that way. All right, I'm going to move him right down over here. Get some eggs and some herbs and then the willow. All right. So we're going to need eight more villagers. We got our storehouse up. I think we'll uh, put the road to it. Make it a little easier to get to. There we go. We are needing the food. Do we have the deer down here? Oh no. Did we kill off all the deer? Gonna do a little exploring. Wanna make sure I got some place for my hunter to hunt. And while exploring, I might be able to find some more blueberries. All right. All right. I have the saw pit now. And this one actually starts with two people. Now, the saw pit, as you can see, has uh, four worker slots. Some of the other buildings have even more. Like mines, mines have six worker slots. They start with two workers also. All right. Now, let's do some fishing. That's about the best I can do. Real close. Eventually, I can put another one out here further away. Trying to keep things a little closer right now. Don't want to spread out too much and invite wolf or bear attacks. <laughs> as soon as I say that, what happens? Aha. And you are not a hunter. So I'm kind of... All right, let's attack. That's right. Bring him down. Bad doggy. Sweet. Village is saved. Where's my hunter? Are you my hunter? No, you're a laborer. Where'd be my hunter? Did you find anything out here? To hunt? No. You're hunting, supposedly. See if I can move her onto the wolf corpse, or near the wolf corpse, and if she'll then harvest it. That would be good. Them wolves, some good eating. Yum. All right, what do we got out here? Hawthorne, 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 and a lot more greens. And that's all Hawthorne. So, 
And still got some greenage there. All right, I'm going to move you out a little further now. Oh, right there. Now, I'm curious, did my hunter get over there? Where did my hunter go? I may need to temporarily... Yeah, she's there. I'm just going to temporarily set the uh, hunting area here because there is that carcass. I would like her to get the meat. And this one. Once you get a little further into the game, micromanaging your foragers is not much of a thing. Yeah, it's just fire and forget. All right. I do want to get the... Now we have unlocked our market. We do definitely want to get the market going. I'm going to put the market... Right over here. Yeah, right there. And that way I have room for some other things. For instance, that root cellar I was talking about. There's just enough room to put it right beside the market. All right. How are our laborers doing? They are laboring. But we're going to need some more trees. Yeah, I'm getting all that. All right. She is out here. And we have found no more blueberries. Good news is we haven't found like a wolf den either, so... I'm plenty happy with that. Do not need that. A little later in the game when you have like a a uh you can get watchtowers and then you can also get like a, a barracks for your military and it it kind of functions like a glorified watchtower but you can deploy your military forces from there to do things like go destroy wolf dens and then also that military might is going to be Super important when it comes to fending off the raiders. The other thing we're going to want to get going here pretty quick, like... As soon as we get to Tier 2, as soon as we get eight more people immigrating, we're going to want to get to the uh, trading post. Be a lot of things to come in Tier 2. But I think for now, this is probably a pretty good stopping point. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it here. And in the next one, we'll pick it up and continue. If you want to see more, uh, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know what you, what you think of the town. If you've uh, got any tips, tricks, hints, whatnot that I may not have covered, uh, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. I I've, I've, do have, as I say, a couple dozen hours in the game now, so I've run into a lot of things. I've also watched a lot of other uh, content creator stuff. So, i got a pretty good understanding of the game. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here now, and hopefully uh, I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.